Every picture tells a story. Over the last 14 years, you've given us all lots of stories. Happy, sad, serious, funny. You've been our voice on the issues that matter. You certainly didn't win every battle you fought, but you made Nova Scotia a better place for all of us. This is our way of saying thanks, Alexa. That kid in the high chair grew up to be one of Nova Scotia's most important and respected politicians. These pictures are of a kid from a privileged family, and Alexa was. But in Alexa's family, privilege meant responsibility. She took that responsibility, though seldom herself, seriously. I guess the first thing we should say is, hi, Mom, how are you? Uh, hopefully you can recognize this. Anyway, so, Mom, uh, just in the future, we wish you the best. Whatever you do, we're certainly proud of you, and we always will be. And um, basically, the one thing we are um, somewhat upset about is that we didn't uh, inherit any of your public speaking skills. So <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> But yeah, no, we know, Mom, you've sort of come to a crossroads, and we don't know what your plans are, but we, yeah, we want you to know that we're behind you, and we're, we're going to support any one of your decisions, and uh, basically, we, I don't know much about politics, I mean, he knows a little bit more, but um, I do know a little bit about what kind of mother you've been, and you've been uh, fantastic, that's for sure, we couldn't have asked for more, and uh, we love you both, or we both love <laughs> you, sorry. <laughs> I admire... Alexa immensely, not only for her public political accomplishments, but mainly for the loving, caring person that she is in her personal life. I'm really delighted that she's my sister. You know, uh, for the first 25 or 30 years of our relationship, uh, we had kind of a normal brother-sister um, uh, relationship where we communicated well and we we, we did lots of things together, and then, you know, the last 20 or 25 years, I've never won an argument with my sister uh, at all. And, you know, I was kind of discouraged about that. Uh, some would say I even uh, had an inferiority complex about it. But um, then I read in the Daily News and in the Halifax Herald in the last few weeks since she retired that nobody, but nobody, has ever won an argument with Alexa. So I feel kind of better now. I first met Alexa when she came to interview our family. Uh, actually, it was my husband she came to interview. She was a newspaper reporter, I think, with one of the local papers. And she came to do a story about Gus, about Jamaica. We've been friends ever since. Hi, Alexa. I wanted you to know how much it meant to me when you first came to work for the city and the social planning department. And I know that while you came to work for me or in, in the city, that we were most interested in trying to put right some of the wrongs that had been done in Africville. And uh, I guess it was that challenge and the difficulties that really cemented our relationship that's been so meaningful throughout the years. Anyway, Alexa, from the people of Africville, we wish you all the best in your new career. And um, we still love you and we always will. If I stop to think about it, what you really did then, way back in the 70s, was bring a social action project to an old house. And if you think about what you've been doing all these years since, you've really brought a social action mandate to yet another old house. Alexa McDonough has always seemed to me to be a person who shows rather than telling. She shows us 
that she's honest. She doesn't tell us, like so many politicians. She shows us that she loves Nova Scotia. She shows us that she has compassion. And the result is that we believe her. She rings true. In 1979, Alexa McDonough went from envelope stuffer to candidate and for the NDP. She ran in the federal riding of Halifax and lost. Less than a year later, there was another federal election. McDonough was trounced again. The seat went to former Premier Gerald Regan. Thanks, Thanks Mary. Congratulations. In the fall of 1980, the provincial New Democrats needed a new leader. The party was in trouble. Jeremy Ackerman had resigned to become a deputy minister for the Buchanan government. Alexa McDonough won the leadership convention with 82% of the vote. I'd like to thank you very much for giving our children a very important message. And that message is that NDP is not always losing. At this point, McDonough didn't have a seat in the legislature. She waited almost a year for an election. Finally, in October 1981, the people said yes to Alexa. I guess the other thing that I'd like to say is that the one thing that's really too bad about tonight, of course, is that Dad won't be here with us. And, and I think it's important for everybody to understand, particularly Alexa, that the absolute proudest moments of, of my dad's life were when Alexa became leader of the NDP and then was elected in MLA. He had a lot to be proud about in his life, but those were, without question, the two proudest moments. I'm so glad that so many were able to get together to celebrate a party, a real party. Hi, Alexa. How are you? Look, I know we don't have very many opportunities to, uh, you know, say thank you to you. So I would just like to take this opportunity to say thank you for everything. Hello, Alexa. I think it's due to your leadership that we have such an environmentally sound office here. Hi, Alexa. Ten and a half years. Little did I know back in April of 84 what fun this was going to be. It's been a slice. Alexa McDonough, the first woman to become the leader of Nova Scotia's New Democratic Party. We spoke to the busy NDP leader on her way to the airport. I think it's extremely important for women who have cracked those barriers to recognize that there's a whole job to be done in terms of supporting other women and not um, reaching the, the point of ma in making the mistake of saying, well, I've done it, so why can't other women do it? The fact is there are very real barriers that remain. That the advocacy of comprehensive free trade is in fact the next stage in an escalation of the right-wing campaign of Tory governments and their corporate masters to wipe out, plain and simple, the mixed economy and the universal social benefits that we enjoy in this country today. I just want to say on behalf of all of us that don't live in Nova Scotia to thank you for your contribution to the social democratic movement, to thank you for being the voice at times when it was very unpopular to do so. Sometimes you had the company of one other or two others or three others or maybe even four but you were always there. I have only the warmest, uh, but I can assure you, extremely chaste feelings for Alexa over the years. She's been one of my uh, heroines, heroes, whatever. Uh, she's done a tremendous amount uh, for the party and uh, her eternal optimism, uh, her sense of fun, her sense of humor, uh, and her tremendous contributions to uh, the life of the party uh, have uh, meant so much to me. Hi Alexa, isn't this a great opportunity for us to tell you how much we love you and appreciate what you've done? And I'm so glad that tonight you're getting toasted, as you should, for your dedication, for your inspiration, and for your friendship. In the last 10 or 12 years, I've had the pleasure of being her family physician. I've always admired Alexa's amazing ability for knowledge and all kinds of activities and finesse and government, etc. But there's one thing that Alexa has never dealt with, and that's her anatomy and physiology. <laughs> Alexa, 
it would be absolutely wonderful to see the same challenge put to you that's been put to all of us. Say something meaningful in 20 seconds. When did you last do that? John Buchanan discovered an urgent need for ethics in government. <laughs> It will surely be remembered as one of the most astounding deathbed confessions in Nova Scotia political history. We've never been uh, ready to fight a campaign like we're ready to fight this one. We have 34 candidates nominated. We have many more nominations in the works this week. The McDonough campaign went over to damage control today. I can tell you that I wouldn't know a marijuana plant if I saw one. The candidate from Colchester South caused one of those problems. In the middle of the election campaign, her husband was arrested for growing marijuana plants. It didn't do much for the party's credibility. And former Premier John Buchanan did his own style of work on the NDP's credibility. Just before the election call, he appointed NDP MLA Bob Levy to the bench. This kind of day would have humbled most politicians but not the ever-determined Alexa McDonough. And you asked me to fold up my tent? Not on your life. She almost lost her own seat, holding on by a mere 26 votes. And I don't mind telling you it was too close for comfort. Certainly the AD election was an absolute heartbreak. For me, it was the all-time low point in, in my years in politics. So 14 years as leader, leader, Alexa, 14 years has a special ring, because I was 14 years old when you got elected as leader. And I'm glad that uh, you stuck around long enough as leader so that I could work under you. Thanks. What can I say? She's a great boss. I'm not saying goodbye, Alexa, because you're still here. I'd just like to thank you for everything you've done over the years. Well, it's been a wonderful experience to work for you, Alexa, as, uh, as a leader and as a fellow Democrat, to see someone who is a strong leader, who has a clear idea of where you want to go, but who also gives so much room for those who are working both near you and far away so that they can develop and uh, contribute in their own best ways. It's your government, it's our children, it's the future of this province, and we demand that they deliver. Good luck. Mr. Premier and Mr. Prime Minister, the fishermen and the fish plant workers and the working people of this province aren't going to wait for an invitation to sit down at the table any longer. Our candidate, Alexa McDonough. The Liberals may arrogantly assume that they are the only alternative, as they always do, but we know that Donald Cameron's bad medicine won't work any better just because it's a doctor who pours it down your throats. <laughs> The new Democrats so far have nominated 20 candidates to run when Premier Cameron calls an election. I appreciate your support. Thanks a lot. You take care of yourself. Last night, a determined Alexa McDonough put on a brave face. But today, with still only two other new Democrats elected, she was a candid Alexa McDonough. Any sense of disappointment? Of course. How could I pretend otherwise? Uh, we really felt that uh, we were perhaps going to make that el elusive breakthrough. I mean, but McDonough believes it was close. I think a lot of people did flirt with the possibility that they would vote New Democrat for the first time. In the end, I think a lot of people backed away from it because they weren't willing to take the chance uh, that the Tories would be reelected. Hi, Alexa. This is the seat from which we did all that candidate search before the 1993 election. I hope you'll be around to help find such excellent candidates next time around. Hi, leader. Gee, uh, I guess this is about the last time I'm going to get to call you that. But what a fabulous 14 years we've had. And if I had to do it all over again, I would do it. And I would do it with you, only I'd work a heck of a lot harder. You are one of the most natural and articulate politicians that I've ever met. And I hope that we're going to be seeing a lot more of you in the political scene. I 
As you know, I don't say much, but I work. And I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. By the way, your count is overdue, Alexa. Thank you for all your time. Hi, Alexa. This is me, Sati, just saying happy retirement. And I want you to know that I took this building and I built it in Vancouver just so I'd have the proper backdrop to make this announcement. Another one of her great time management tricks was to, um, instead of actually parking the Explorer, she would just leave it not illegally parked, but sort of hovering in what some people consider to be an illegal parking spot down on the street below and run upstairs to the office for a second. And uh, of course, I'm sure other people mentioned this come running down a long second later to find the car uh, locked out of gas and ticketed <laughs> sitting there on the road. But that's a lot of time management. I was here 10 years ago, uh, and I was, had a chance to speak at the banquet when uh, Alexa was elected leader. And uh, not a hell of a lot has happened since then, you know, I'll tell you that. Uh, I mean, I mean, she won two seats. I mean, let's, let's, let's get factual here. When she, was, when she was elected, there were people in the legislature. She, she wasn't one of them. They, she, had, she brought that total down to one. I'm just reciting the fact, up to three, down to two. I mean, at this rate, Alexa's going to be premier in 2,259. And then she'll be senator in 2,270. Hi. I just want to say thank you very much, Alexa, because uh, quite honestly, if it hadn't been for you, I would be still leading a very normal life. 